Welcome back to the Bees Case Spine Community Credit Union pregame show. I'm Daniel Trevino sitting with Bees pitcher Max Perlman for the second time in less than a week. Max, we spoke to you last just before the Bees ended their losing streak. Now recap what it's been like since then. Granted, you're, I guess, what, 2-1 and one in those last three games, but the mood has to be different around the clubhouse. Yeah, um, it was tough to lose that game, the, the one in the middle with uh, you know that home run in the eighth inning. Uh, Murph was throwing so well, um, so you know that kind of loss it hurts, but it's uh, it's not one that really brings you down because we played so well and Murph pitched so well. You give up a home run to a big league rehabbing, um, you know it happens. And then uh, uh, last night was great for us. You know we got down early um, in the bullpen. Uh, myself and Chaz were able to, to hold them to, to put up zeros after that one bad inning, and. Uh, you know the team coming back now. The locker room, uh, you know, the clubhouse is feeling light and feeling good. Feeling like we're, uh, you know, gonna play play well these next few games. It was a really good job of the offense. They scored eight unanswered runs. They scored one in the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, and they really broke through in the seventh. But that wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for your appearance out of the pen. And you could argue that it was your best appearance so far this year. I believe you pitched a total of four and a third. Only gave up one hit. Didn't walk one batter. And you struck out five. What was really working for you last night, Max? Uh, I was able to keep the fastball down. Uh, you know, we talked about it last time. Um, at this level, uh, that's really what they're preaching to us is they want fastball command. Um, so I was able to get the fastball down. I got a lot of broken bats, a lot of early ground balls, um, and then I was, you know, I was able to beat some guys with that fastball. Um, you know, I, I was getting my off speed over for strikes, but yeah, really living off that fastball um, and, and keeping it down. They really weren't able to get good contact. Now you're keeping it down, but at least from my angle up in the booth, and I'm sitting overhead, you can see it sort of tailing, or is it sinking? Are you doing something to the ball to make it do that? Uh, no, uh, and uh, I mean, my ball does have a good amount of sink and, and run to it, uh, and that's just something, just based on the way my arm action is, um, it does that. I'm very fortunate for that. Um, Everyone always asks me how I do it. I just I just throw the ball and it does that. Um, yeah, I'm, I guess I'm very lucky in that respect. Well, it's, it's sort of two-sided. You get all that movement, but you have to locate it well, and you did yesterday, of course. And we sometimes describe that movement as wicked in the booth. <laughs> it certainly looks that way. Now, I want to go to a specific moment in the game. Your only hit that you gave up was a triple to the number nine hitter, Tyler Grimes, with one out in the top of the seventh. And at this point, the Bees are only trailing by two runs. They're really inching back in this game. Now you have two outs to go, and it looks like it's going to be up to you on the mound. What's going through your head with a runner at third and thinking that this Bees team is coming back, but now they might have another run to deal with? Well, you know, uh, you see a situation like that, and you know you, your first thought with one out and a guy on third, and in that situation you've you got to try and get to strike the next guy out. You really want to try and eliminate a, a, you know, a fly ball there, scores him. Um, you, know, you know, the infield's in because we're trying to hold the run, so... It, a well-placed grounder gets him in. So your thought process in that situation is do everything I can to, to strike this guy out. Um, what did you do to strike him out? Um, I, I worked at, uh, the second time I'd faced that guy. I was a, the, the lefty, the leadoff guy. Um, I, I got some fastballs down and away to him. Um, he, he never, he didn't put a good swing on a fastball the first at bat. And uh, so we just kept pounding him away with fastballs. Um, and lucky, it was, I think it was a one-two pitch. I got him to chase one down around his shins um, to strike him out. So that was, that was a big out for me. And the next out was just as big, I imagine, getting that final out of that inning. How pumped were you walking off that mound? I was, I was pretty pumped up. You know, we had uh, Sano was on deck. That's their, their big guy. And, and we had a meeting before the game with Waz. And, and uh, that was a guy we weren't allowed to let beat us in a situation. So that was coming up. Uh, I fell down three and one to that to uh, the two-hole guy. And... And Nestor said, came out to the mound and, and said, uh, you know, we need to get this guy just, just pump fastballs, make him beat you. So he just set up right down the middle, and I was able to get two strikes and throw the last one by him. Did you realize you got your first win as a Burlington B? Uh, it, someone, I, I did. It wasn't something I thought about during the game, but someone came up and and during the the line, the uh, the handshake line, all the bullpen guys were were on me and uh, said, yeah, I, I snaked that one away. Well, certainly congratulations are due to you, Max, as well as Chaz Mayo got his first save. Really good job by the bullpen, obviously anchored by you last night. All right, thank you very much. All right, thank you very much, Max. We'll send it back to News Radio 1490, KBUR and KBUR.com.